Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down bowl season. We uh, stop at the Alamo with uh, Utah taking on uh, Texas. Should be an interesting matchup between the Big 12 and the Pac-12. We got Michelle Botkin on the line from Ute Zone at 247 Sports. Michelle, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I am doing just fine. I appreciate you stopping by to talk some uh, Utah football. Oh, anytime. So obviously, uh, ever since Utah joined the Pac-12, there's been that thought that uh, they were kind of earning their way into the Pac-12. When would they show that uh, they belonged? That didn't take long. Uh, but then in terms of sealing the deal, accomplishing what Kyle Whittingham has set out to do, and that's win a Pac-12 championship uh, for the second straight year, not getting it done in the title game, but winning the South for a second consecutive season. And then really a disappointing showing in what we all anticipated to be a very competitive matchup against Oregon. Uh, your thoughts about Utah season and just uh, not quite completing the mission. Overall, very great season. It, it It's still been a historical season for Utah football. This is only the third time that they've had 11 wins in a season. Uh, and so, you know, that that's all great and positive. I think there, there you know, were some higher expectations. I, you know, the, the media before media day, most of them felt pretty confident that Utah would be the one to take the Pac-12 title, and that obviously didn't happen. But outside of that, they pretty much accomplished everything, you know, they set out to do in 2019. And, uh, you know, even though they came up short, I think I think it was overall a successful season, and they have an opportunity to kind of cap it off with a a decent win against a decent opponent. Yeah, it's a Utah football program that's been built on front seven play on defense, the line play being exceptional, running game on offense, not a whole lot of dynamic players in recent years in regards to outside play. But the, what what made this Utah team a little bit better and a cut above from what we traditionally see when Utah's winning at the eight or nine games a year? They're finally getting that depth that they need to play really well at the P5 level. And, and that's not to say that they haven't had P5 level players in the past. It's just, you know, the amount of them. And so, you know, as they learned really quickly when they first joined the Pac-12, injuries can get pretty ugly. You know, your your first string guys maybe can keep up with, with all those Pac-12 teams, but it's the second and third string guys that you sometimes have to have come in and fill in that that weren't quite up to par and weren't quite where I think Utah needed them to be in order to be competitive towards the end of the season in the Pac-12, which is where we traditionally saw them struggle when they first joined. I think this season was the first year that they finally had some of that depth. And I, I think it was the biggest difference maker of all, you know, their defensive line literally was too deep. I mean, they could they could switch out their second stringers with their first stringers and really not miss a beat. Uh, and, you know, they, they ha finally had some options at wide receiver, uh, you know, four or four or five options that they could go to, which hasn't always been the case. Uh, and quarterback play was a huge difference maker for them. Uh, they really haven't had a very good quarterback leading the charge since Brian Johnson in that 08 season against Alabama. So uh, having Tyler Huntley really step up his game and I think buy in and believe in what offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig made a huge difference for him. Michelle, it's been an interesting fit in regards to when we think Pac-12, we think USC, UCLA. We think even in more recent years, Oregon, of course, being a dominant program, but it's a West Coast thing. And then, of course, Utah and Colorado come into the fray, what, five, six, seven years ago, something in that range. Uh, do you think Utah has, has fully hit their their stride and become a Pac-12 member uh, through and through and, and found its its base in regards to fan base and, and recruiting footprint and, and where to go for players to compete at, at what you're talking about at the Power 5 level? kind of started turning the corner in 2014, which was three years after they had joined the conference. 2011, they had an eight and four season. Um, and I think they surprised a lot of people that first year. I don't think anybody thought that they would be really in the mix for anything that year. And they they kind of competed right off the bat. And granted, it was kind of a down year for the Pac-12 that year. Um, but then 2012 and 2013, they had five and seven seasons. And 
I, I don't think that surprised Kyle Whittingham very much, but I think it really surprised the fan base a little bit. I don't think I, I I don't think a lot of people really understood what it meant to make that jump from the Mountain West to the Pac-12, and I, I think it kind of hit them like a, a ton of bricks. But then Whittingham turned it around in 2014, and it's really kind of just been a slow incline, getting better and better each season, and now we're kind of finally seeing them, I think, find their place in the Pac-12 and, you know, the types of players that they want to bring into their program that can compete at that level, but still kind of stay true to the identity that they've always had, um, even back in the Mountain West in the WAC days. So it's it's been a really interesting progression to watch. And, you know, there there's only, what, like three schools that have had to do that? TCU? Well, no, actually just two. So TCU and Utah are the only G5 schools that have made that jump to the P5 level. And and we've seen some ups and downs with them. But, I, you know, I think at least as far as Utah is concerned, they're about where they want to be at this point. Got uh, Michelle Bodkin on the line from uh, Ute Zone, 247 Sports, of course, one of the mainstays in college athletics. So please check out her work right there. Uh, Utah preparing for Texas. Of course, this is a name brand game when it comes to Texas football, but a down year for the Longhorns coming off seven and five, uh, a season removed from going to the Big 12 championship game and a spot in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, So coaches and players, what are they saying about Texas in particular and saying about this opportunity? Because the word incentive and motivation always comes into play this time Mm -hmm. of year when talking about bowl appearances. I mean, it's understandable. You know, I I know some of the guys were a little bit down uh, just because unlike Oregon, it it didn't, they had to win in order to either go to the Rose Bowl or, or potentially the college football playoff. And that didn't happen. And so they, they knew that immediately they'd be relegated to a much lower bowl level um, if they didn't take care of business, which didn't happen. Obviously, you know, that hurts. It's a gut punch. And you expect them to be down for a little bit about that. Uh, But I think it really helped that they got this matchup with Texas. And yeah, you mentioned Texas has been a little bit down. They haven't been quite what they've been in years past, but the name still packs a punch. Uh, And especially playing in Texas, in San Antonio, you know, that name carries a lot of weight. And so I think they're excited for the challenge, um, you know, and, and Texas isn't a team that I would say you can really, you know, discount. They still have four and five star talent anywhere and anywhere and everywhere on that team. And quite frankly, you know, one good game, all they have to do is show up for one good game and, and you know, they could give the Utes everything, everything that they got in a little bit more. So I think... I think Kyle Whittingham is really preaching, you know, to respect the opponent. And I think they absolutely do. Um, There's no reason not to. Like I said, the name still carries weight, even regardless of what their record is. Um, They're they're college football royalty. and, And that, you know, up year, down year, it doesn't really change how I think the general public views that team. So, Michelle, aside from uh, the Pac-12 championship game being the one opportunity to be on the big stage in front of a national audience, of course, uh, college football games in in Utah in particular playing on a national stage in front of a national audience on a fairly regular basis. But in regards to anybody who wants to watch college football has to watch this game. So these bowl games get big ratings and uh, a lot of people are going to watch Utah football that don't normally watch Utah football. So who are some of those guys uh, to look out for in regards to maybe not just necessarily the stars, but some of, some of the players that uh, may become impact players next season, some guys that uh, you'll be keeping your eye on uh, during the Alamo Bowl? You know, I think the two positions I'm going to really kind of be watching for Utah uh, is the secondary because they've had some injuries, so they've had to shuffle some things around. They're going to be without Julian Blackman um, and his backup, R.J. Hubert. So, And Jalen Johnson has declared for the draft, so he's not going to participate. So, you know, that's your lockdown corner and your lockdown safety that that aren't available to you, which means that they're going to have to, you know, dig into the vault a little bit and, and 
you know, figure out who who's going to be that next guy up. And and there's some interesting things that they've been playing with. Uh, Tyler Huntley's backup for the last couple of years, their quarterback backup, uh, has been taking reps at safety. And so, you know, there's a possibility that we may be seeing Jason Shelley play some snaps at safety and seeing how he potentially does in that position with some of the quarterbacks that they're bringing in next year. Uh, uh, another kid, Vontae Davis, has seen limited reps, but I, I would expect, you know, we may be seeing him play a little bit. Uh, and then uh, two corners that have kind of been playing all season, but they've shared the same side because Jalen Johnson was playing. They're now going to be corner number one and corner number two on the left and right side. So it's going to be interesting to see how they work together side by side rather than rotating in and out with each other. And then on the flip side, on the opposite side of the ball, I'm really curious to see the running backs. Now Zach Moss is playing and Zach Moss is obviously a very dynamic, well-known running back, uh, nationally renowned. But I, I kind of expect that his day will be a little on the short side. I think they're going to play him enough to hopefully break the last couple of records he needs to break uh, in, in regards to Utah football. Uh, and then we're probably going to start seeing some of the younger guys and, and seeing. And we've periodically seen them uh, throughout the season anyway. Jordan Wilmore, Devin Brumfield. Uh, you know, some of, some of those kids. And so I, I think they're probably going to throw, throw them in some more and, you know, see where they're at now that it's the end of the year versus the beginning of the year. Talking Utah football with the Utes coming off another uh, Pac-12 South Division championship for a second consecutive season. Michelle Botkins on the line from Ute Zone uh, 247 Sports. Uh, when we look at recruiting, Utah is certainly a program in which you can't just go, bam, that's the recruiting ranking. That's who they are. They, it's a developmental program at a very high level, of course, you know, i.e. Michigan State, Wisconsin, Kansas State, some other programs that don't bring in four and five star talent on a regular basis, but recruit up. Still a 32nd ranking in the country right now, according to the uh, 247 composite. Uh, number five in the Pac-12 is certainly proven to be enough. Uh, to build a championship level program in the Pac-12 before, so you got to feel pretty good about the current uh, class. They are so excited about the class that they brought in, and I think the biggest key was that they kept all you know the the top like I think there's there were like six top rated kids in the state of Utah. They kept five five of the six, four of the six home, which historically hasn't happened. Uh, usually when kids that play high school football in Utah, you know, are highly ranked, they, they typically decide to go to bigger name schools, uh, the Alabamas, the USC, uh, places, places of that nature. And so for Utah to be able to convince them, hey, stay home, you can, you can have this national championship, Pac-12 championship, you know, level, level here at home and and your family can see you play a lot easier that was huge that was huge it's been a kind of complaint of the fan base in years prior uh and then to go and and flip a kid from ohio state uh was huge as well in clark phillips so it, it was a big recruiting class for utah they're not quite done i believe they have two or three more spots they need to fill uh come february but They've, they've got the, the big core of it, and, uh, you know, every year we're seeing a little bit of an increase as to the types of guys that they can bring in, but they're also remaining true to who they've always been, which, as you mentioned, they're a developmental school. And uh, there are, I, I can't think of a coach or a staff, really, that does a better job than Utah and Kyle Whittingham in seeing the potential in guys, whether it's, you know, recruiting them and polishing them up at their position or, you know, I, there's been a lot of times where they found quarterbacks and said, nope, you're going to be a really good safety or you're going to make a really good linebacker if you just buy into it. And, you know, they're sending those kids to the NFL, which is impressive. And uh, as you mentioned, Clark Phillips, a premier uh, get for the program, pulling him away from Ohio State, the fourth rated uh, cornerback in the country. 
out of uh, California. Michelle Bodkin uh, joining us to talk Utah football with the Utes taking on Texas in the Alamo Bowl coming up here on New Year's Eve, the very last game of 2019 in college football. Michelle, we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Anytime. More than happy to talk Utah football.